All righty, people are coming in. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining today's webinar. We're going to wait just a few minutes until more folks join the call. So hang tight and we will get started in about a minute and a half. All right, and if you're just now joining, thank you all for joining today's call. I'm going to wait just a few minutes and let other people join the session. Um, so thank you for your patience. Um, there should be, I just saw a question in the chat. There should be an option on your Zoom if you have the most updated Zoom to turn on closed captioning at the bottom where you have your um, options to share, you know, ask questions and things like that, there should be an option for you to turn on closed captioning on your own personal device. Um, all right, people are still coming in. So we're gonna give it a couple more seconds before we get started. If you've just now joined, thank you for joining today's call. We are excited to be with you all today. While we're waiting, if you want to chat in where you are calling in from, your company, your location, we can uh, have a little bit of, of chatting before we get started on the today's webinar. The numbers are still going up. Alrighty. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the 2021 Summit Engagement Center tutorial. We are almost a month away from this year's summit, which even saying it out loud is exciting and both just completely wild that we are already here at this point. Um, and we are so excited to be with you all virtually this year. Of course, we will miss gathering in person again with you all, but hopefully next year we'll be able to see some of your familiar faces, uh, but until then, we will all be together virtually, um, and we are really excited for that to come in a few weeks. My name is Madeline. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the communications manager at Out and Equal. I am so excited to be with you all today and with my colleagues to talk about the engagement center at this year's summit. I want to start off by thanking you all for joining the call. I'm looking at the chat box now, and so many of you are still chatting in. We have people from all over the country here um, representing so many amazing companies. And we are so excited that you have joined us and taken time out of your day to learn about the Engagement Center this year. This call is for all partners who have a booth in this year's Engagement Center at Summit. If you are unclear or just joining the call for more information um, or don't know if you have a booth, you should check in with your account manager and they'll let you know what you all have um, signed up for. Uh, this call is being recorded and for anybody who is unable to attend from your company, you can send them the recording after the call. We will be following up with an email with the recording, with the presentation and a few other links with helpful information that you can send to your colleagues who are unable to make the call or for you to check in on after the session. We will also have an FAQ doc that goes over a lot of the questions that you're probably gonna ask on today's call that you can have at your uh, disposal after the call. We will have time for questions at the end. We'll have a few minutes to answer questions. If we do not get to your question, we are always available over email. And again, we will be sending up follow-up information. So we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So looking at today's agenda, in a moment, I'm gonna be turning it over to my colleagues to discuss all of the details of the Engagement Center, um, including here we have the details, we have the Pathable checklist. So Pathable being our platform that Summit is hosted on. We'll talk about new features for those of you who were here last year that you will be new to you um, and new to everyone who was not a booth representative last year or involved in the Engagement Center. 
We will talk about important dates and deadlines and everything that's coming up within the next couple of weeks. And then again, we'll have time at the end to answer your questions. Um, and again, if we don't get to your questions, we will be following up with a lot of information and are available to talk uh, after the call. On today's call, you will hear from myself. You will hear from the Senior Director, Director of Corporate Engagement, Adam Marquez, and our Senior Events Manager, Annalicia Hawkins. So those three faces that you've probably heard from a bunch of times before and are in communication with, and we're all happy to be with you. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Adam, but again, we are so excited to be with you all. We are so thankful that you are here, took time out of your day, are participating in Summit this year. Again, we are only like five weeks away from summit and we are so excited to be with you all. So thank you so much for joining. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Adam. Thank you so much, Madeline. And hello everyone. Uh, as Madeline mentioned, I am Adam Marcus, Senior Director of Corporate Engagement. And on behalf of everyone at OutEqual, thank you for joining us today as we step through some key elements of what, there's, of what this year's Virtual Engagement Center is going to look like and how you can build out your own booth to make it work best for your company's priorities. Uh, this year, we are thrilled to welcome approximately 60 companies from diverse industries, many of which have offices all over the world. And because this year's engagement center is once again going to be completely virtual, that means attendees will be able to take advantage of many exciting features that can only be offered in this type of digital space. Okay, so first things first, registering your company booth representatives. Each company has a booth in this year's engagement center, each company that has a booth in this year's engagement center can have up to six representatives staffing their virtual booth during the week of summit. This should be more than enough people to manage any traffic that comes through your booth. And the main partner contact for your company should have received an email from my colleague Annalicia a couple of weeks ago with directions on registering your booth representatives. Two important things to note here. One, if your booth representative is also attending the full conference as a participant, then they will need to register both as an attendee using your partner code and also register as a booth representative via that separate booth registration link. This will give them access to both parts of the online summit platform that they will need. On the other end though, if, if they are just helping out as a booth representative, they will not be able to access the rest of the summit platform outside of the booth area. So they can't attend workshops or plenaries or any other summit activities. Um, they're just there to help staff the booth. Okay, so next slide, please. When is the engagement center open? Well, technically the daily live hours for the engagement center will be from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, which is the pre-conference day. So the full summit hasn't started yet, but attendees are still able to log in, peruse the site, uh, visit the engagement center and chat with your representatives during this time. Then once the conference kicks off on Wednesday, the live open hours will be from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. to 5.00 p.m. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And these hours are all in the U.S. Eastern time zone. What the live hours basically mean is that when somebody visits a company booth inside the engagement center, you can expect to interact live with a company representative via the Talk Now feature which my colleague Annalisa will chat about in just a moment. But however, even outside of these live hours, um, some of the attendees can still visit the booths and learn much more about many of OutNequal's dedicated partners. You guys are true champions in this quest for LGBTQ workplace equality. So uh, visitors can still go in, take a look, watch your videos, click on your links. Um, it means really that as soon as the platform opens up on September 28th, attendees can start exploring the engagement center. Okay, let's talk about the features a little bit. So these are some of the fun features that you can include in your booth. The important thing to remember is that you can customize your booth with the words, images, website links, videos, and people that you want to include based on your priorities. So if your main objective for the booth is for recruitment purposes, then build out your booth with features that will showcase you as an employer of choice and will draw visitors in and keep them engaged. And again, Annalisa will show you what a completed booth looks like in just a bit so you can see how all of these elements come together. So first, of course, is your company logo. It can be the same logo that we have for your partnership or it can be a completely different logo specifically for this booth. It's up to you. You can also include a header banner, which you'll need to create based on the specs listed here so that it shows up properly within your booth. 
the about us section should provide a quick sort of elevator pitch of who you are and why you're here at Summit. You can include a couple of website links that tell more of your story or that direct visitors to take action on something. If you're looking to hire um, some folks, then you'll want to add a link to your open positions in the job opportunities field on the back end. That way, this section will actually show up in your booth and will direct interested visitors to your job openings. It will actually say job, job opportunities. And then you can include graphics, graphic image, whether it's the same partner ad that you've submitted or something completely different. Again, it's up to you. Uh, you can include some interesting videos as well. You can have up to six videos and visitors can rotate through them. So, you know, make sure that they're compelling stories relevant to the audience who will be at Summit. If you have a brochure or other files you want to share with visitors, you can upload them to the files section. A cool interactive feature that you can include is in the polls section. So you can ask questions to the attendees about something connected to your company and, and see what responses you can get. You can be as creative as you like with these polls. You can also communicate with, with visitors through the discussion board. So if folks don't want to join a video call, you can actually engage with them via chat in the conversation tab. You can do fun things like ask them to leave their email address so that they can be entered into a drawing or something unique like that. Your representatives will also show up on your booth page and visitors will be able to speak directly with them via video conferencing when they click the talk now button. And Alicia will go deeper into this aspect shortly, but it's important for your representatives to complete their profile so visitors can see their names, their titles, and of course their shiny mugs. And finally, there is a deals and promos section where you can provide the opportunities for visitors to receive some sort of a gift for visiting the booth, whether it's a link to download a coupon or a, or a code to redeem a pro promotional item or whatever you prefer, um, this is where you would include that information. Okay, next slide. A few important things to keep in mind as your booth representatives prepare to build out um, your customized space. On September 7th, all booth reps will have registered, all booth reps that have registered will be granted access to the Passable platform. So whichever email that was provided during the booth rep res registration is where the email granting access will be sent. You may wanna add the summit support at outnequal.org to your safe senders list so that it doesn't go to your junk folder. Once you've logged into the platform, you'll notice the site will still be under construction. So bear with us as we will still be working to build out the 2021 Summit experience. So the booth reps will technically have access to the Summit schedule, but please refrain from signing up for any sessions at that time. If you're also attending the full Summit, you can start to reserve your spots for the different workshops and sessions on September 28th. Staff will be checking this to ensure folks are signing up for, folks are not signing up for sessions uh, prematurely. And then also just be aware that um, no one from the company will actually be able to start building out your booth until at least one person has uh, registered as a booth representative. That registration is what triggers the email, which provides the back end access. Okay, I think that's it for my portion. And now I will hand it off to my colleague, Annalicia, who is going to walk you through the logistics of setting things up on the back end, as well as what things will look like from an attendee perspective. Um, from an attendee experience this year. All right, that's all yours, Annalicia. Thank you all. Thanks, Adam. I'm Annalicia, Senior Events Manager, and I would also like to thank you all for joining today. Summit is coming up really quickly, and we are so excited to see all of your booths this year. I'll be going over first your Pathable Checklist, which will provide a step-by-step -step list of action items for you to take when building out your booth. As Adam mentioned, you'll receive an email from us with your unique link to log into the platform. So for returning users with the same email address as 2020 Summit registration, you will go ahead and sign in using the same password you used for 2020. If you do not remember your password, there is an option to reset it. Uh, for returning users with a new email address, uh, maybe you changed email addresses um, from last year, you'll need to sign in using a new account. And then new users who did not attend last year, you'll just need to create a new account. Uh, so step two will be to edit your profile. So you can update this at a later time, but it does need to, to be completed by Tuesday, September 28th. 
Some information will be populated from your registration process, but make sure you complete your entire profile in order to maximize your summit experience. If you're a returning user from 2020, your profile information will carry over from last year's event, but of course you are able to edit the information if anything has changed. A helpful tip is to bookmark this site in your web browser. We strongly encourage you to do this when you first log in so that you have quick access as you build out your booth. When you're ready to start building out your company's booth, you'll wanna select edit my organization, which is under the account tab and then navigate to the basics tab. The basics tab will house the following booth features your company logo, your header banner, about us, website and job opportunity links, graphics, and deals and promos. Something to keep in mind when you are building out your booth is that if one of these fields is left blank, for example, deals or promos, that entire section will not show up in your booth. Once you start adding your booth elements, make sure to click save before navigating away from this page. Sorry, can you go back one slide? Thank you. Uh, once you select save, the platform will redirect you to preview your booth. And to make edits, you'll just need to navigate back to the account tab and select edit my organization. We strongly encourage your company to identify one of your booth reps as the lead to build out your booth in order to avoid multiple people making edits. And now I'll go over some additional features that you'll find under edit my organization. So for the polls tab, uh, as Adam mentioned, this is a bonus feature that your organization may choose to utilize if you want to uh, create engagement by creating a poll for your attendees. That will be displayed under the polls tab, as you can see here. Uh, you will be able to see poll results, but not the contact information of the attendees submitting the poll. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking of any polls that you may want to create. Under the content assets tab, this is where you will upload any videos or files you choose to display. Video, videos or files that you choose to star will be embedded on your booth page. Otherwise, they will be displayed under the files tab. You can feature up to six videos and you can feature up to four files of any type on the organization page. The featured videos will be displayed on your page in a carousel format and the files will be visible for download and all of the content will also be displayed under the files tab. So here's an example of a completed booth. Once you've finalized all of your booth elements, it will look something like this. You can also navigate to this booth under the company name Acme for reference when you log in to build your booth out. This will be available until Friday, September 24th. So if you need a reference, if you just need an example of what your booth should look like, uh, it, it will be available for you. You can note that company booth reps are listed on the right hand side under the staff tab as well as talk now, which is what you see here. This is what you'll see when talk now is live. So these are the staff members that are listed as available under talk now. Please note that the showcase section shown on the lower right hand side here is something that out and equal will manage. So if your company is presenting during a session, these will automatically appear in your booth. So attendee perspective, this is how attendees will be able to find your booth from the event homepage. So they will navigate to engagement center, select virtual booths from the drop down, and then they will just need to find and click on your booth. So we're excited to talk about some new features this year with you all. Uh, Adam did mention polls as well as the discussion board already, but I'm gonna share the following new features to be aware of which we're really excited about. So that includes talk now, call now, updated booth metrics and leave your card. So talk now replaces the group meeting feature from last year, allowing attendees to make one-on-one -on -one video calls to engagement center representatives in a round robin format. Zoom is not required to in order to use this feature, which is great. Uh, this screenshot is an example of what you'll see when a session is live. So when it is not live, there will be a countdown displayed for each Talk Now session throughout the event. And once the session is over, the countdown will reset for the next session. 
After each completed Talk Now call, the system will make the staff member unavailable. Once you are ready for the next call, you will need to make yourself available again by toggling your availability status back on. You are able to disable Talk Now for individual booth reps if you want by navigating to Edit My Organization and unchecking Enable Talk Now next to the representative's name. Booth representatives who are enabled for Talk Now will be listed in the Talk Now section of your organization with a green check mark next to their name during the session. Talk Now only works on laptops and computers. It does not work on mobile devices, including cell phones or tablets. So now I'll share a brief tutorial video to show you what to expect during a Talk Now call. During the time frame of the virtual trade show, you will need to toggle yourself available to receive calls from your attendees. To do so, head to the desktop header and toggle on available for talk now. When an attendee places a call and the round robin logic directs it to you, you will see a pop up window with the attendees name and company. To accept the call, simply click the green accept button. This will launch a Zoom room just for you and the attendee. Each person will connect to the Zoom session and conversation can begin. The typical Zoom options of audio, video, and screen sharing are available. Any notes you type into the lead tab will be available to you on the Edit My Organization page, as long as you click Save Note. To chat directly with the attendee, click the chat tab. And when your conversation is complete, you have two options. To close this room and become immediately available for a new call, or close the room and be able to toggle yourself on whenever you are ready. Once you close the room, you will be directed to an agenda details page. Here you can finish up any notes that you would like to have about that attendee and the conversation. And always remember to save note in order to have access to it on your Edit My Organization page. When you are ready to receive calls, head to the desktop header and toggle on Available for Talk Now. These videos will also be made available for reference after this call. Um, I'm going to show another brief video that shows a side by side comparison of the booth representative experience versus the attendee experience. Hello and welcome. Here is a side by side comparison of the exhibitor experience and the attendee experience as they are connected to one another through talk now. Great, so we can navigate back to the slides. Great, thank you. All booths will have Talk Now and Call Now capability enabled unless your company chooses to opt out from this feature uh, by becoming a static booth by September 17th. And the link to the opt out form will be included in the slide deck after the call. So similar to Talk Now, the Call Now feature allows direct calls to selected individual booth representatives, which is different than the Talk Now feature, rather than exclusively being a round robin format. Similar to Talk Now, the system notifies a staff member of an incoming call by displaying a pop up message with options to accept or decline and playing a ringtone. Zoom is not required in order to use Call Now. And after each completed call now call, the system will make the staff member unavailable and you will need to toggle your availability status to on when you are ready. 
As with Talk Now, Call Now only works on laptops and computers and not on mobile devices. The Call Now button will only be visible under each booth, booth representative's name when they are toggled on to available. Talk Now and Call Now will have the same format when in the call itself. The difference is that attendees will have the option to select Call Now to call a specific individual, or they can select Talk Now to contact the first available booth representative. So you'll see in this example call that there is a circled section on the right that says, if you are experiencing audio issues, you can use the Zoom app instead. And you can click there and it will pop you out into the Zoom app. In the event that you experience technical difficulties within a call, you have the option to pop out into the Zoom app instead, or you can use the chat feature to chat in your own separate call link to connect with the attendee. If you do choose to utilize the Zoom app, make sure to chat in and let the attendee know so they can click on that button as well and you can be connected in the Zoom app. So for missed calls, all missed calls will be displayed as a notification within the bell icon, which you can see in this screenshot here. Attendees have an option to leave a written message for booth representatives if the video call goes unanswered. If a message is sent to you directly, it will appear in your inbox drop down field. Any missed talk now call details because they're not to a specific individual will go under the unassigned lead section under the manage tab for all booth representatives to view. For talk now, booth representatives video calls will ring for 30 seconds to answer before the call is routed to another staff member. During call now, booth representatives will have 30 seconds to answer before the call ends. If you miss a call now call, you will receive a personal notification with details of the missed call. This is important to note, if you miss a call, the platform will automatically toggle your available for talk now status to unavailable. You must toggle it back on after you've missed a call. So there's a call now. Call, oops, call log under the Talk Now tab that houses all call information. If you, if you want to find a note that you took on a specific call, that can be found using the following pathway. If you navigate to the Responded At column and select the timestamp for that specific call, which this screenshot shows here. The log can be exported as a CSV file and it provides the following data. Caller and responder names, call time, response and duration, and the status of the call. So leave your card is a great new feature where attendees who visit your booth may choose to leave their contact information and request information through the leave your card button, which is displayed on the upper right hand corner of your booth page. You can see in the screenshot here. If an attendee leaves their card, their information will be counted as a lead and it can then be found under the Manage tab. So booth, rep, booth metrics, uh, booth representatives can view metrics through the Analytics tab as shown here. So these are the following, these are the, um, the metrics that can be found under this tab, booth leads and visits. So an attendee is a lead if they have either clicked the Leave Your Card button or if they have initiated a talk now or call now call. So lead information will include uh, the attendee's email address as well as other profile information. Booth visits will include all attendees who have clicked on the booth page and does not include the attendee's contact information. Conversations include private messages, both outbound and inbound from the organization private meetings, and chat messages. Content consumption will include total video views, so any videos that you choose to display on your page, total document views under files, your video average view duration, so the average time attendees spend watching videos on the booth page, and it excludes watch time for booth staff, and your link clicks. Uh, the metrics will also include your total and unique booth visits chart. So this chart displays total booth visits and unique booth visits described above over time with options to see from event launch or the last seven days or the last 30 days. All of these metrics are available to be downloaded into a CSV file by selecting the download CSV button next to the appropriate section. 
So here are some really important dates and deadlines for you and your booth representatives to keep in mind. August 6th, which has obviously passed, booth representative registration is now open. So in, you should have received an email from me with the link to register your up to six booth representatives. September 7th is when your engagement center elements should be ready for upload and access will be granted to you for your booth build out. September 17th, uh, you will need to, if you choose to opt out of the live video talk features, you must submit the form via the link here and make sure to submit only one form per company. September 17th is also the deadline to register your engagement center representatives. September 24th, the deadline to complete your virtual booth. And then September 28th is when all attendees will be able to access the virtual summit platform. October 29th will be the final day for booth representatives and attendees to access the platform. So this is also the final date for you to download any leads, visits, your talk now information and your analytics information from the from the platform. So my final note is that Pathable is extremely user friendly. So I really hope that you all find building out your booth to be seamless. But if you're having any trouble at all, uh, feel free to contact me. <laughs> Once you've made an edit to your virtual booth, it should immediately it, it, Ooh, it should immediately update and you'll be able to see your changes within seconds. Uh, thank you all for joining. Um, I hope this was uh, really informative for you all. And now I will pass it back to Madeline. Thank you. Uh, so we do have a lot of time for questions. Um, I'm going to go through the questions that we have already uh, received so far. Um, and then if you have additional questions, please feel free to use the chat box and the question and answer feature on Zoom for your questions. And we will um, answer those on the call. Um, let me take a look. So Analysia, can you go back over what you meant with the static booth? Yes, so a static booth is a booth that does not have the talk now or call now uh, capability enabled. So if you would like to have your booth built out, but you do not want to be able to, to connect with attendees using talk now or call now, then you will need to fill out the form to let us know that you are opting out. And then that ability will not be enabled for your company. Great. Um, and then can you also touch quickly on, you mentioned Zoom uh, not being needed for talk now um, and talk about the Zoom requirements for this feature. Yes, so Pathable does use Zoom for the talk now, call now features, but you as booth reps are not required to have a Zoom account. Uh, also for those of you who are with a company that restricts the use of Zoom, you will still be able to use these features. With that said, if you are having audio issues when you're speaking with an attendee and you need to troubleshoot by clicking that link, you will be popped out into a Zoom room. For, so for those of you who are with a company that restricts the use of Zoom, as I previously mentioned, that's when you would chat in a link to your preferred video conferencing platform. Whoops, I was on mute. Hopefully that answered your question, but if not, feel free to chat in and we can expand a little bit. Um, for returning sponsors um, that had a booth in 2020, will the assets that they had in their booth be loaded again this year or will they need to start from scratch? Their assets will not roll over from, from last year. So you will need to build out your booth from scratch and hopefully that gives you the chance to update anything or, or make some changes from last year. Um, Annalise, I feel like I'm just going back to you again <laughs> to keep muting and unmuting, but uh, are the notes, uh, you talked about being able to take notes when you're talking to an attendee, are they able to uh, be viewed by all six booth reps or only the person who spoke with the attendee? So those are able to be viewed by all of the booth reps. So if you go to uh, export your, your leads, that's where you'll see the notes for any calls that were made by the organization as well. Great. 
Um, I believe the, this might be an Adam question, uh, but it might also be an Annalisa question of if your team cannot manage all of the booth hours, um, is that okay? And, and what do we recommend for, for the companies who can't have a rep there every, for all the hours that the booth is open? Yeah, I can answer part of that. That's fine. Um, we don't necessarily expect that you have to staff it during the whole time that, you know, the engagement center is live. Um, there just won't be the ability to, um, you know, kind of click that talk now button and, and chat with somebody one-on-one, -on -one. but visitors can still go into the booth. They can interact with all the other elements, whether it's the videos or the links. Um, they just won't have that kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, live talk option. Uh, anything else to add for that, Annalisa? Uh, nope, I think Adam covered it pretty well. Okay, great. Um, we have a lot of questions, so thank you all for chatting these in and for your patience as we get to your questions. Um, do registered summit attendees, can any attendee access the booth as a rep um, if they were not registered as a rep ahead of time? Yes, so this is actually included in our FAQ as well, but uh, any, so the, the maximum number of booth representatives, you can have a six, but if you would like to switch out any of the booth representatives that you originally registered with someone who is already registered for Summit, you can do that. So uh, you will just need to, there's, there's um, screenshots of this in the FAQ for, for you to reference, but you can, switch out current booth representatives with someone who is already registered for Summit, but they do need to be already registered for the full conference in order to show up as someone that you can add as a booth rep. Uh, so we had a question about um, being able to chat as a group um, in Zoom as opposed to the one-on-one -on -one Zooms through the booth. Um, we had a question asking if the group option will still be available this year. Um, I can let Annalisa jump in on that question. And then we also um, can follow up with any additional information from with you if we find anything else out. But Annalisa, do you wanna jump in quickly on that? Yes, so I do believe that the Talk Now feature has replaced the group meeting feature from last year. So instead of that group meeting, you will only be able to connect with attendees one-on-one -on -one through either Talk Now or Call Now. But um, I'm going to clarify that with Pathable and we will go ahead and add that to the FAQ document, which we will send out after this call. So that should be updated for you soon. Great, thank you. Um, scrolling again through the question and answer. Um, uh, so for the booth um, representatives who will be using visuals, design, graphics, do we have information available for them in terms of sizing, file types, parameters? Uh, does that information already exist somewhere or is there anything that they should know for that question, for that specific? Yes, most of that information is uh, available when you're building out your booth. So under the manage tab, when you upload any files or documents or videos or anything that, that will have um, size information uh, when you're uploading those elements. Um, but I believe one of Adam's slides also had some of that information. I don't know if we can navigate back there, but um, you can also reference the slide deck after this call for for that information. If, and if there's anything that's missing, um, definitely contact us. But most of the uh, size and file information should be available when you are building out those elements. Great, thank you. Um, I don't see any, I'm still scrolling through to make sure we got all of the questions. Um, I know some questions were answered via chat um, and then some of, our, some of my colleagues were chatting back in the question and answer box. Uh, so make sure you check back on that to see if your question was just answered um, over chat. Um, again, we will be sending the presentation recording FAQ and additional information to you all following the call um, this afternoon. 
So you will receive all this information. I'm still looking. Okay, here's a new question. Uh, is there a workaround for Pathable? We touched on this a little bit um, when talking about Zoom, but just to clarify on Alicia, is there a workaround for Pathable uh, for companies who don't use Zoom? Uh, yes. Um, I'm actually going to pass this one to my colleague Kira um, to answer. Okay. Thanks, Kira. Uh, yeah, no problem. Hi, everyone. Um, so the platform that we are using is Pathable. Um, and unfortunately, there isn't a, a workaround for that. Um, with that said, we used Pathable last year, um, and there were multiple um, attendees who, you know, with a company who their company did not, you know, or restricted Zoom and, and they're, they're, they were able to still, you know, participate in, in, um, in Summit. So I, I don't want that to be a red flag or, you know, a concern of yours that, you know, you won't be able to participate. Um, so that's, that's point one. The second is also that we um, are, last year and we will do the same for this year we we do create this zoom workaround document because pathable is a zoom based platform um we again know that there are some folks um who will be attending who you know might kind of run into some areas where you know what do i do if i if i can't use zoom so as far as the engagement center goes um you know i just kind of defer back to the the point that Annalisa made earlier about um the talk now call now feature um i know it looks like it's you know it it looks that you know the the talk now call now feature does pop you you know into like a Zoom meeting, um, which is accurate, but it is embedded in their site, so the the you don't need to have an account, um, nor do you you know for those folks who don't know their company restricts Zoom, you can um, still participate in the talk now call now features. Great, thank you. Um, we have a couple questions about making sure that you're on the list to receive communications. Everybody who's on this call uh, will receive all follow-up communications about Summit. Um, so thank you for, for flagging that. Uh, any other questions? I'll pause for just a couple minutes to see if any last minute questions come in, but I think we are all caught up on your questions from the chat box and question and answer box but I will pause for just a second and open it up to my colleagues if there's any last minute um, announcements or points of clarification that they wanna make. I'll just say that in the post webinar communication that goes out to you all, that will include the links to the videos that I showed uh, during this session, as well as a link to an FAQ document that uh, talks about things we, didn't get to get, get to you in this call. Um, so hopefully that will also help uh, with your with your reference as you build out your booth. Thank you. Adam, any last last comments before we wrap up today's call? No, I would just mention if you know if there's any other questions that you have regarding kind of the overarching partnership or visibility at Summit or any other deliverables, feel free to reach out to your account manager and, and you can help ensure that you have the answers that you need. Great, thank you. Well, I think we are all caught up on our questions. Again, we will be following up later this afternoon with all of the information you need for the engagement center. But if there's any questions like Adam just said, feel free to reach out to your account manager, um, to, to your colleagues who weren't able to make the call. We will uh, be sending the recording that you can forward to them. Um, they also, if they are a partner contact with us or a booth rep, they will already receive the email from us. Um, even if they weren't registered for today's call. Uh, so thank you all again so much for joining. We are so excited for Summit, again, almost a month away. Um, and we are so excited to be with you all virtually. We are here if you have any questions. Um, and thank you all for joining. Have a great day.